Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and this video, surprise, surprise, is not about the gameplay. But um, I, I do want to talk about the gameplay just a little bit. I'm kind of struggling using this UMP. I, I got into a lobby last night and, and just stayed forever, and I think it turned out my connection sucked, because as soon as I changed the lobby, when, when some guy was being a jackass, I, uh, I started playing so much better with it. And it might be worse players, it, it might, but I really think it was the connection. They just weren't dropping for me. But, um, but yeah, anyway, I'm figuring out how to use the UMP and, and making the most of it. But let's talk about... Uh, my, my real intention here, which is the uh, the commentary. So I told the story on Painkiller already uh, a few nights, a couple weeks ago, I think. But Painkiller already usually has like 3,000 people watching and there's far more of you. So I thought I would retell it here and, and you know, well, let's just get started. So what it's like to have a girl. Um, when I had my first kid, I was probably 26 years old or something like that. I had been married three or four years. And... Um, uh, I thought I'd have a boy. That was just the deal. We didn't have it, like, any test done. You know, we were going to be surprised. You can't see my quotes. But a lot of people do that. A lot of people elect to not know the sex of their kid just so that uh, you know it comes to them as a surprise. Eh, whatever. That's what we did for our first kid. And uh, even though we were keeping it as a surprise, I just knew it would be a boy. I knew it. I was positive. And why was I so positive? I don't know. Just felt lucky. Just felt like, you know... Things go my way. Why would I have a girl? I want a boy. I'll get a boy. That's just how we go here. And um, I had this unfounded confidence that it would be a boy that I can hardly explain. I just knew it would be. And, um, uh, you know, everyone else, you know, we, we talked about names and such. And uh, Hope was the boy name. No, the girl name. <laughs> and uh, Hunter was, was going to be the name if it was a guy. I don't know. Just something about Hunter seemed cool. It seemed like someone who would uh, movies, like lead in a movie, you know, the, the main character's name or something. I don't know. I liked Hunter. So, uh, so those were the name choices. And I was just sure, you know, that we were going to have our Hunter and that was going to be that. So that's how we went. And then... Um, I remember the, the delivery day. So, uh, um, you know, they, they pulled out Hope and um, boom, she was a girl. And uh, it was like, like I, I, so, you know, don't judge me until you get to the end here. But for me, like the, the fact that she was a girl at the time, it felt catastrophic. It felt like this incurable problem. I, I I don't know a better way to say it. I uh, I like I, I was thinking to myself like a car crash at this point in my life. You know, I'm 26. I was freshly married. Things were okay. Nothing was nothing permanent. I don't think it ever happened to me. My grandmother passed, and that was a rough thing. But I didn't like you know see her all the time or anything. And um, you know, it, it it was okay, I guess. And but when I had a girl. Wow, you know, what do you do about that? How do you fix it? You can't fix it. There is no fixing it, you know? Like, I've totaled a car before, which felt tragic at the time, but, um, like, it, it gets better. A few months go by, and, and whatever, you know, financial problem it caused kind of fades away. You get yourself another car, might be better, might be worse, but you move on. Everything is okay. But having a girl, that to me was something that, like, was incurable. And I, I didn't know how to cope with it. So, um, um, you know, and, and I think a, a lot of people lie about this. You know, a lot of people, they, uh, you know, they act like, oh, I don't care. I just want it to be healthy. It doesn't make a difference. No, I cared. I cared. <laughs> and then... You know, there's this almost pressure on new parents to instantly love your kids, right? I'm told of, of these mothers, you know, where they, they put the baby in their arms and they are just like super in love with a, with a newborn baby, right? Like, oh my gosh, this newborn baby is the most amazing thing in the world. It's so fantastic. It's great, etc. cetera. And um, uh, for me, like... I don't know. They handed this newborn baby and it just like, it was like wet luggage or something. And, you know, you like poke at it and you're like, you know, so what do you do? Like, you, you got anything? You, you can't talk. You can hardly think. You just sort of lay there and make messes. Um, you're, you're a ton of work and money, but you're, you're kind of a taker, kid. You know, you're not really much of a giver here. You're, you're, you're taking a lot more than, uh, <laughs> than you're giving. So, uh, um, that was like my initial impression of parenthood, right? That that was kind of how things started. But um, 
it didn't change really quickly either. <laughs> you know, uh, that that last, you know, like six months in, and there's not a lot changing. I guess she smiles and giggles and stuff, but but um, shucks, six months. Do they even sit up? I think they do. I think they're sitting up at that point and maybe watching you now and then. But they're certainly not giving back. Like if you had a friend at school who did all the things a six-month-old baby could, you'd be like, "Dude, I, I don't, I just don't think we're meant to hang out. Like you, you're really not offering me a whole lot here." And um, I suppose some parents are just wired in a way that you know these one-sided relationships work fine for them. But that wasn't my natural wiring, especially at, at 26. I have this notion that as a grandfather someday, you know, maybe maybe 10, 15 years from now, um, I'll, I'll instantly love this kid. I'll know what babies are all about. I understand the potential in a newborn today in a way that I didn't at 26. I, I guess intellectually I understood their potential. But, but um, yeah, for the most part, it was like whatever. So, uh, um, yeah, anyway, but... Over time, like, uh, you know, a hope, one neat thing about hope, and we've had both extremes with our kids, is that she was like an early performer at everything. You know, she walked early. By the time she was a year old, she was like singing the alphabet. Um, even today, you know, she, she's always been in like uh, um, academically gifted classes and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, all the, the physical stuff and the and the like, academic milestones that, that babies hit, uh, she was just crushing on. And that was kind of a neat thing. Um, the other thing is, uh, like, she had this bright fire red hair. And, you know, you just, like, I don't know, I'd walk into a restaurant with her in my arms and everyone would instantly be like, wow, look at that girl. She's so beautiful. This is so amazing. And, uh, you know, I sat there and wondered, like, what is it like for parents of normal kids? You know, parents who don't have super children, (laughs) you know, because that's that's how hope was. Right. And, um, you know, so that was a a pretty cool thing. And then I got to know her, right? Sometime around, I don't know, 18 months, two and a half years, like in that range, she went from just being like a, you know, leaky luggage that I had to carry around and spend on constantly to being my daughter. That, that, that's when she underwent this transformation from being, you know, a pain in the ass to, uh, to somebody that I loved. And, you know, even as I say somebody now, that's, that's kind of a, a remarkable thing, right? Cause like I, for me at the time, I didn't consider newborns people in the same way that I, that I do today. Uh, not, not like they don't deserve, you know, <laughs> protection of the law kind of thing, but, but like, you know, Newborn babies to me were just like, eh, you know, like it, there's really not much going on. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll come back and you'll be good. And um, uh, yeah, but but then as I got to know her and got to see her and got to smile with her and laugh with her and, and make her joke and, and like it was it was a really cool thing. And uh, then, you know, a, a few years later, as we were going to have our second kid, uh, it wasn't such a matter of, you know, oh, my God, oh, my God, I hope I have a boy like it was before I had hope. Instead, it was like, oh no, what if I do have a boy? Like, what am I going to do? I wasn't sure I was capable of loving a son in the same way that I was of loving a daughter. And that was a huge change for me. Like, I, I, at this point, it was like, if I have two girls, I'd be fine with that. Because I just don't know, you know, I don't know if if a, if a son could do it for me in in the way that a girl did, and uh, and the answer to that is yes. Now I have both, and and I get it. And kids are cool, and it's all fun. But um, uh, although I will say with Colin, like that, you know, there was the same sort of thing. It was like, all right, here we go again. I hope this one's cool. I hope he can do stuff. <laughs> and uh, you know, it takes a while to really get to know your kid. And uh, and for me, like, I don't know. Like I, I fell in love with my kids is I, I got to meet them and know them and just not uh, from their mere existence. So, so yeah, uh, two on one, tough to win there. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, I, I thought I'd share this with you guys. I thought it was uh, an interesting commentary idea. If you hadn't seen uh, me talk about it on Painkiller already, it, uh, it takes me a little bit to warm up to kids. But, uh, but when I do, I, I warm up in, in a way, I warm up with a bond that... Uh, that can't be matched. So most on points captured in highest KD, not a terrible game. Uh, 
Oh, oh, uh, if you like this video, be sure to click on like. It means the world to me. It uh, helps the videos do well and stuff like that. Uh, two video series that you might like. The top one is Microwave Insanity. It's a weekly thing I do every Friday where we put crazy stuff in microwaves. It, sometimes it blows up. Sometimes it catches on fire. Sometimes it does cool stuff. Now, the bottom one is Mail Monday, a weekly series that uh, I, I look at your letters and I answer them and give some serious replies, sometimes some not-so-serious replies. So uh, if you like it around here, click subscribe in the top right and uh, have a good day.